Hey, hey. Episode 23, Hashira Meeting, where we find out they're not just one-dimensional characters standing in our way, but they have a range of personalities and skills and are actually pretty cool. Although maybe that might happen later. <laughs> maybe not yet. We gotta get through this trial first. This is quite the assembly, quite the event. A rare moment of mercy from Butterfly Lady. Yeah, I feel like Tanjiro will literally struggle till he dies. <laughs> it does sound flamboyant, doesn't it? Make sure you burst them flamboyantly. <laughs> it takes all types. You know, it, it takes a village to raise a Tanjiro. Nezuko's best outcome or move here is not doing anything, right? Like, if she fights, that's all they need. If she goes for blood, that's all they need. Oh my god. We got a Nezuko flashback. It's hard to know exactly how she's processing everything as a demon. But this confirms that she's, like, processing something. Something's going on in there. It's not just instinct. Hey, she gets lines! I'm so excited! Even if it's an inner monologue. I feel like it would go a long way if she actually said that out loud, you know what I mean? Removing the muzzle and having a spoken line. <laughs> I mean, it's a big nothing, but that's like the biggest thing it possibly could have been, if you know what I mean. There's no better outcome than her just holding her ground. The drool says otherwise, but the fact that she's in control says a lot. Says it all. You live by the experiment, you die by the experiment, right? You gotta take heed of this. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it proves that she'll never attack humans. It definitely should give you pause. Boy, Tomioka is not gonna be popular anymore. Although Butterfly Lady is to believe he never really was, so nothing really lost. Yeah, it's tough. You gotta like sell this thing every time, each and every time. But that's just your responsibility. This goes a huge way for earning Tanjiro's loyalty. Just this gratitude. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll just go and do that, no problem. Yeah, easy. That's fair, though. I sort of like it. I love how he dealt with this. Skipping the 12 moon blood things or whatever and just going right for the top. Right, right, yeah. One at a time. You couldn't even beat a lower five. So, so cute. He's so kawaii. I love it. I feel like that couldn't have gotten much better. Honestly, while I feel like kindness is a virtue and there's something really powerful about being welcoming, I think there is something to be said for using selectivity as power, if that makes sense. Especially in a group or in an occupation where the stakes are really high or where you are going for really high levels of success and you sort of depend on the quality of the group around you. In those cases, people like the Hashira and the Survey Corps in Attack on Titan, they don't have time for niceties and letting the wrong people in means endangering everyone. So it makes a little bit more sense why they're going to be somewhat distrusting and harsh at first. But what I think makes it okay, or what sort of rounds that whole thing out, is that they give people a path there. So it's like for Tanjiro, he's new, he shows up with his demon, they don't know what the hell's going on, it's way outside of their norms, they've been fighting for survival every day of their lives, have witnessed massive amounts of death and carnage of people around them. They don't have the resources to coddle Tanjiro and his demon sister, no matter how kawaii she is. But it's like, all right, we'll go out and do this thing then. Go out and do this thing that helps us. And I know for a fact, without having watched any more of this, that because they have pretty clear goals and are pretty aligned with each other about what those goals are, people who match those goals will be welcomed and loved like few people in life are welcomed and loved. There's something really refreshing to me about the master being so sort of cool and level-headed and kind without being overly kind, if that makes sense. Like he gave Tanjiro a massive challenge that has a very high chance of failure. So this is definitely not charity, but it immediately establishes a dynamic and in a way is one of the most fair ways you could have put that. It's like, if you want to be in this group, you have to do what the group does. The end. And there's nothing else. There's no prejudice. There's no preconceptions about his personality or his weaknesses or whatever. It's like, do this, you're in. Don't do this, you're out. Tanjiro no hanashi wa kore de <laughs> now get to it. Get on that Kazuki thing. I'm glad this got resolved the way it did. Because I know there's just so much we can get out of the Hakushi. I'm very excited to get to know them gradually. But I feel like it'll take time, because there's so many of them. The Hashira, I mean. <laughs> He's not done. 
Oh, a little vengeance going on for Tanjiro. Very skilled. He's paying attention now. <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate people who can appreciate people, if you know what I mean. I like her. Right, that takes us back. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. Embarrass us in front of the Hashira. How dare you? It's true. Tanjiro didn't think about their jobs in his quest for headbutting vengeance. This is fine. Still fine, still kawaii. The master's weird. I don't know what to think about him yet. There's something a little bit off putting about him. It's her, right. So the second butterfly girl is not one of the Hashira. She's like an apprentice or a sister. Maybe even a daughter. Kanao Tsuyuri. We've seen her. I didn't realize we had seen her that long ago. Wait till Zenitsu meets her. <laughs> okay. Do you struggle writing female characters? Not this again. <laughs> well, if you can't put them in a box, have them stare blankly as a humor device. You can still make them as quiet as f and I thought Cloud Dude was a space case. <laughs> there are a lot of characters being introduced. This is like a huge Demon Slayer world all of a sudden. I feel like they're going to have a relationship. A certain kind of relationship. I see he's back to normal. He's <laughs> crying again. <laughs> that's how you know he's healthy. When he stops crying, that's when you got to be concerned. He's fine. Despite the fact that you abandoned him in the forest. <laughs> lost it. He's flipped another switch. It hurts me that they don't know what he is capable of. And what he's done. Once you get pulled into Zenitsu's crying world, you never get out of it. Oh, really? He actually lost, like, body mass? That's terrible. Oh, how did you not see him there? <laughs> He's there the whole time. This guy's done. This job's not worth it. He's alright, but I feel like he's been fundamentally changed. He experienced a big humbling. Maybe that's why he wasn't noticed. It's actually kind of terribly depressing. You hate to see him like that. Though, if he turns a corner on it, he can come out of it in a better place, maybe? He's going to go through some stuff right now. Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's been an experience. There's some reflection that's been due, I guess. Alright, let's stop screaming for one second. <laughs> so I'm confident this will eventually end well, just because Inuske has enough greatness already, and is in such good company that, barring another major tragedy right after this, I feel like he ends up getting closure in a way that, that is useful, and becomes better because of this experience. But that being said, this moment itself is kind of tragic for me. Like, I get the, the sadness of it. If only because it hurts to see people question what is actually great about them. I feel like in moments of defeat like this, or in moments where there's a, a big humbling as he's experienced, initially the way that it's conceptualized is like, well, what good are any of the things that I have? You know, what use is X good quality or XYZ good qualities if this is the result? If I can be defeated like this, etc. But I think while there definitely is going to be a lesson in every defeat and there's going to be a lesson in every difficult time, which might even point to ways that we are deficient or things we do need to grow. I think it's important to remember that the things that we have that are great are not always going to mean we win, if that makes sense. In fact, I feel like sometimes the things that make us great means we we sacrifice winning in the short term for winning in the long term. But even winning in the long term isn't guaranteed. It's just sometimes you lose and that comes down to the circumstance of the thing. Failure feels like a death sentence and I think the instinct or the desire can be to sort of compromise or like start to take shortcuts. But failure is just that, you know, it's just one moment. I don't remember why I heard this, but I like the idea that failure is 
perfectly fine. Just strive to not make it a habit. I personally really like this guy. I like his base character. I like his spirit. I like his drive. I like his courage. And he could be refined, but like I, and I also think Tanjiro and Zenitsu would hate to see him question the things that make him great because of this defeat. The optimal thing is that he continues to have these pillars of his identity that are so good and then like tweaks the things around it that are not as refined, which for him might be things like patience, teamwork, strategy, things like that. But also they're going to be exhausted. Like they probably could just use some R&R. <laughs> All things considered, we're, we're good, right? We're all alive. Yeah, exactly. Tanjiro has his head on right. We can deal with the other stuff. Nezuko gets her own room. Imagine that. Started from a box and now we're here. <laughs> you know what's weird? I'm like on edge waiting for this crow to show up at any minute. Telling them to get out. Honestly, I'm still so reeling from that. That was huge. They did not make that suggestion lightly. They did not go halfway. They really had skin in the game. Yeah. There are strong, solid people left. Is this some kind of magic or something? Yeah. There's something weird about him. I wonder if there are any ulterior motives possible. Expect nothing less from Tantro. One day, yeah, one day you'll be an adult, you know. Instead of this pathetic, helpless, valueless child that you are now. Tanjiro always refocusing, refocusing what he wants, or keeping his eyes on the prize. I feel like without that, he, he can't do what he does. Oh, that's expanding, growing. The Demon Slayers are getting smaller. We need more cannon fodder. <laughs> Isn't that bad, ma bad management, though, to blame the employees? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the problem with like expanding the groups is it doesn't really matter the quantity of Demon Slayers, the quality is what matters. This guy must drink a lot of water. Yeah, that are severely dehydrated. Yes. At this level, like, the individual who joins has to have that level of drive and conviction. This is not something that can be forced on someone. You feel like the last bastion of hope in a way. Hey, honoring legacy of the past. Shout out to Erwin. It's pretty cool. It's like the last glimmer of hope, but it's a pretty damn cool glimmer of hope. I'm glad he's back in the ranks at least. I guess they have higher priorities. It's not going to be easy. This guy's got to be carrying a lot of weight in his shoulders too, despite his calm demeanor. Alright, that feels real. Doesn't feel like there's a really big or significant alternative motive there. <laughs> it's very exciting. I mean, like, this is sort of a, a prologue to the group, but it's cool. For similar reasons, you know, speaking of them, that the survey corps are cool. It's like, we don't got much, and the chances of success are very slim. Yet, if you're going to have a crew, this is sort of the crew that you want, if that makes sense. And they're alluring and appealing partly because of their unity and because of their focus. And Tanjiro, and Inosuke for that matter, is a perfect fit. And I have a feeling if this goes right, the group learns a lot from the, the boys and the boys learn maybe even more from the group. It's this great feeling of simultaneously being up against the odds and having everything to lose, but also feeling like we got a chance. You know, this is the squad. So I'm very excited to see more of the Hashira as we go forward. 97. That is a a lot. I'm a little bit confused now about the, the length of time this has been going on. Yes! Oh my god, are we gonna get a training episode? Are there beaches in ancient Japan? Whose DNA is Tanjiro eating? I'm gonna be so thrilled if we get training episodes with them. There's just so much that can come out of that, so much potential. I thought we had like finished the training with Tanjiro in the early, early parts of season one, and as good as those episodes were, they were kind of short. So more would be amazing.